one thing I wish I knew a lot earlier, and I think one thing I wish more people knew is the power of faith will come by hearing. So if you hear the wrong things, you're now going to have faith in the wrong things. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to TDY Faith, Family and Finance. Man, for those that don't know me, my name is Winston, but you can call me Winnie. And I got a treat for y'all today. So I got my brother, man. I got my brother from another mother. um, And we're going to have a very nice conversation. Um, And I can't, you know, I'm going to introduce this man as um, probably one of the biggest heads in New Jersey. Right. Like, and, and I don't mean that like figuratively, he's a very humble guy. I mean that, I mean that physically, he has a very large head and, um, I love him and, and yeah, man. So I want to introduce y'all to Joel Ozemina. Joel, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Thank you for that glowing, glowing, glowing introduction. No, absolutely, man. That's what um, we do. <laughs> uh, my name is Joel. I am excited to be here. I'm a fan of Winston. Not only is he my brother, he's just somebody I'm completely inspired by who I look up to. So for me to you, this is the treat itself. This is an honor. Um, And uh, I'm just excited to talk. I'm excited to get into it. But a little bit about me. I'm a product manager. I live in New Jersey with my fiance. Going to be my wife soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I I work at American Express in product management. And uh, yeah, just been working on getting my degree. I'm graduating in a few months with a master's in business administration and uh, looking to uh, just continue this career path and learn a little bit more about myself, learn a little bit more about life, and uh, be the person I want to be. Facts. Yeah. Facts. So I would say one, one of the things that I love the most about you yeah. is um, you had the opportunity to take more of a conventional path. Mm-hmm. Like, take uh, for those that don't know, Joel played, like, Division One football, um, and you played football pretty much through, like, high school and, and mm-hmm. all that, right? So you had the opportunity to kind of take – that that path uh like the athlete life or you could have probably also gotten mixed in with different crowds and did the the music thing or like the rap thing or what like whatever yeah. right but you chose a, a semi-unconventional path and um have leveled up and upskilled right to be able to get to where you're trying to get to rather than just going down the the road most traveled yeah um and i can't speak I can't speak volumes of that as much as I want to, mm-hmm. but I really want to say that like just seeing your character development over the last, what, f- 10, 12 years, right, that, that we've known each other, mm-hmm. man, I'm excited for where you're going, bro. I'm I excited for where you're going. It. I and appreciate I, it. I just know that um, it's going to be awesome. No, I real. appreciate that. Yeah, I think um, especially post-college, that, uh, that route was kind of those two roads that diverged were right there in front of me. And... Um, I think for me personally, it was about what I was able to sustain past just five, six years of, you know, trying to grind it out, trying to make the football thing work. But also, too, um, honestly, where my passion was, my passion is people in business. um, And I want to marry those as much as I can um, throughout my life. And then hopefully it leads me to other beautiful things. But um, football was absolutely a passion of mine as well. And like I wanted to see that through. And there's other ways that I think I can not only give back to the sport, to the game, but also, um, still have fun because ultimately like that's what I was doing it for to have fun. So I'm able to still channel that a little bit in my life, but the transition has been nothing short of difficult, nothing short of, you know, just unprecedented. This is something that I don't necessarily have somebody or a blueprint to follow. So, Mm -hmm. um, at times it can very much be lonely. And, um, I think overall I look back and I'm like, I'm glad I chose this. Like you said, kind of took that, uh, took that road and made this, uh, made this decision to kind of come on to the business side of things instead of pursuing another passion. But, um, now I'm able to kind of figure out what I like to do in the middle of it. So it's been rewarding regardless. So I, uh, I definitely, uh, I think about that a lot too. Like what if I kind of took that other route and what would that look like? But I'm here now. So, yeah. And, and, and your life is pretty cool. My life is pretty cool. I would say. Can't can't complain. I'm not going to, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so so um, normally we do like the praise, prayer, and, yeah. and practice, and all of that. But I actually just want to jump right into the conversation to for today, because yeah. um, we had like a three-hour conversation last night, and uh, yeah, it was 
It was very fruitful and I wish we recorded it, <laughs> but we didn't get a chance to. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we could pull nuggets from that conversation into this one. Um, so I'm really just going to turn it over to you, right? Like, yeah. like we don't script these things. It's all free flowing. But I do want to know from all of my guests, right? Since the podcast is centered on faith, family and finance, right? The idea is how do we help people grow more in these three areas every day? How are we challenging ourselves to grow more in these three areas every day? And I've made it a point, right, to say that you don't need to be a guru to provide guidance. All you need to be is one step ahead. So you can mm. tell that person one step behind you, don't step here, don't step there, maybe step here. You right. know what I'm saying? So so based off of that, like the conversations that we have um, are for people that are, you know, aspiring to be, but also people that are um, past that as well, that are now looking retrospectively as well, trying to see what they could have done differently and how they can disseminate this message to somebody in their life that is around our age, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of the, the, the motivation for the Driven You. So with that in mind, what is one thing that you wish or, or one thing that you wish everybody knew or one thing you wish everybody did? Mm. I think that's a really, really good question. And I'm sure there's a million things I would say. But I think the one thing that continues to pop into my mind of one thing I wish I knew a lot earlier, and I think one thing I wish more people knew is the power of your inner dialogue. It's the story you're telling yourself, the voice you hear every day, whether you want to, you know, tune it out or not. It really determines not only how you think, but what you do and also how you perceive the experience that we have, which is our reality and, you know, our life and all as a, as a whole. So, um, yeah, I think inner dialogue, inner self-talk is is really, really important. I don't think people practice enough good habits in those. Okay, so yeah. walk, walk that back for me a little bit. Yeah. Because um, inner, inner self-dialogue can be almost seen as a negative thing, mm. right? Like, oh, you're talking to yourself or, oh, you're trying to... Um, you know, it's, it's kind of been like over spiritualized mm -hmm. or or kind of looked down upon in, in, in certain circles. Um, I want to hear like what what exactly you're trying to say with like inner dialogue. What what kind of inner dialogue are you referring to? Yeah, just like I think the way we even just approach the simplest tasks. So um, I'm going to have a conversation with Winston about something that's been bothering me. Right. Prior to that conversation, the inner dialogue that I have, if it's. Winston's at fault. Winston did this to me. Winston did this. Winston did this. I'm essentially, you know, sh uh, skirting all accountability and positioning my mind to think when I go into that conversation, I need to let Winston know all the things he did wrong to me. But in fact, an inner, uh, a positive inner dialogue says, hey, like, this is how this impacted me. This is how I felt about this. And this is some of the things that I did. Like, what can we do, Winston, to make sure that either I don't feel this way or I don't, you know, this doesn't happen again. And I think when you're able to sit with yourself and have a conversation, um, an objective conversation that doesn't necessarily include blame, but rather just saying, I'm taking accountability and what do I actually want with yourself first? You'll be able to message that to whoever you need to a lot better. So mm -hmm. I take that inner dialogue is not only practice, but coaching, but a, a diary to myself, a, um, a motivator too. There's times where I talk to myself. Uh, I'm known for talking to myself on the field. Okay. I'm like, I talk to myself. So if, especially when I played, um, I'm going over cues. I'm motivating myself. You got this, Joel. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. But also, mm -hmm. too, like, it leads me to talk to more guys on the team. So, like, I can be over communicative. I can be looked at as a leader because I know what's going on. And also, I'm talking to those guys. So, as I talk mm -hmm. to myself, I'm able to communicate to others way more effectively because I'm getting a ton of practice. Facts. I'm getting a lot of reps in right now, just getting some bad ideas out, some good ideas out, some nonsense out. Um, but ultimately, I'm able to kind of refine it to something that. Has, for most, for the most part, kind of works out. So, and you, um, and you know, it, I I love that because um, the the Bible. I know everybody that's watching is not necessarily a Christian, uh, but all of this is biblical principles. Like, let's yeah. not skirt that, right? So, like the the Bible talks about how David, King David, encouraged himself in the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Oftentimes, the even even talks about how Jesus withdrew to pray and be alone, right? Have conversations with God, like by himself. Mm -hmm. There is. How do I put this? There is power in introspection. There is Absolutely. power in reflection because yeah. without the reflection, there is no way to know where it where to go next. Right. Like if you can't self grade and if you can't be introspective in that, you have no barometer. Right. To compare against for how you can actually improve. And I think a lot of people are missing out on the simplest 
I, or rather, they're missing out on the benefits associated with a simple act like reflection and introspection yeah. and, and self uh, self dialogue. Yeah, I think self talk is just a principle or another facet of being able to sit with yourself, being present, being able to look inward, um, being able to uh, treat yourself nicely too. I think your positive self talk, well, negative self talk. Can we can we can we touch on that really quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't think people like themselves. <laughs> why you say that? I agree, but why you say that? I, I think that it's really hard for a lot of people to sit down with themselves in silence mm. and like just sit, sit, relax and, and vibe with yourself. Okay. I think that a lot of people are scared to sit with themselves because people, uh, how do I put this? Um, there's a difference between discipline and punishment, mm -hmm. right? Discipline corrects punishment honestly just inflicts right it, 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 it punishes um, I think people are scared of conversation with themselves because they self punish instead of self discipline okay yeah you feel what I'm saying yeah. and and you can't discipline is the same as um, conviction right while punishment is like condemnation conviction they both make you feel bad for a season but the purpose of conviction the purpose of discipline right is self discipline is to always draw you back to a better a better end right is always to to push you forward to you know somewhere better the purpose of co condemnation or self punishment is always to make you feel bad it pushes you away it makes you feel like you're not worthy it doesn't it doesn't bring love into the situation as well mm -hmm. and i think that's what a lot of people do to themselves when they sit with themselves they give themselves punishment rather than discipline yeah remember the, what we brought up last night about the diet and how we would both approach that yeah um, and the first thing i said was you want to just talk about yeah just yeah the context. so we, we we were talking about um like how would you approach a new diet or how you would you know if you wanted to you know trim up or you know get your body right how would you approach that and i said i feel like a lot of people go in with all the planning and all the sets and everything and all the rigor and also a lot of negativity so you need to do this you're fat you're you know you're not in shape you're unhealthy all these things and that they think is, you know, is objective. I'm being honest with myself. Yeah, I guess you are. It's a little rough, but you're being honest with yourself. Um, if that's what you, you know, if that's what you deem is honest, but at the end of the day, like it doesn't, in, like it doesn't help you actually move further. You're just aware of those things. The thing that actually I think moves you is the positive self-talk. So, um, I said the way I would approach it is one by like, obviously getting all the information and doing all those things, but I wouldn't need to include that. Like, I'm a fat slob or like, I'm, you know, I'm not worthy or something. The, the best thing I need to do is actually loving myself. So mm -hmm. speaking positively to myself, Hey, I'm not where I'm at where I'm not where I want to be right now, but I'm going to get there. And it's not because, um, I want to be skinny. It's not because I want to be in shape. It's because this is the body that's going to carry me through year 70 through year 90 by God's grace. So like, I want to make sure that I'm building habits now to sustain me. And if I take that viewpoint, it's better than just, I need to lose the weight now because I'm going on a trip in two months and I look like crap. Facts. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so do you know the? I, I heard it said this way not too yeah. long ago. The only thing that makes the devil a liar, right? You know how we'd be like, oh, the devil is a liar. The yeah, only yeah. thing that makes the devil a liar is the fact that he's not saying what God is saying. Mm. Right? So um, there's a difference between truth and there's a, dif there's a difference between truth and fact. Okay. Right? So truth is what God has said about you, right? Mm. Is what the creator said about you. If you think about life as you know, a product, right? And where do you go to find details on the product? You go to the product sure, manual, yeah. right? Who knows more about the product than the product manufacturer? Nobody, right? So what the product manufacturer says about the product is the definitive truth, mm -hmm. right? Now there can be facts associated with that as well. Like you can literally be sick and still know that your truth, that the truth, right, is that you are healed and you are mm -hmm. whole. You know what I'm saying? Like you can be you can be visibly experiencing something, but if you hold on to the fact rather than the, the truth, like what, what God has said about you, right? You will inevitably put yourself in a situation where you're focusing on something that is not what you're supposed to be focusing on. Mm. So when I say like the devil, the devil's lies is anything that's not truth. What I'm really trying to say is if the devil comes to you, even with a fact, like if the devil comes to you saying like, oh, you're fat, nobody likes you, da, da, da. Like even if that that is your experience right now, that is not the definitive truth because fact and truth don't always line up. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to gauge when you are being fed a fact or, you know, uh, being fed a narrative and being fed the actual truth. 
And once you differentiate those, you can start rehearsing the truth, mm-hmm. right? Like that's why the Bible says, um, and I be bringing up so many Bible verses. I know everybody that's watching this is not Christian, but you should be. Um, so like they be taught, like the, the, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, mm-hmm. right? So not only does faith come by hearing, right? But you're also supposed to hear the word of God, right? But faith will come by hearing. So if you hear the wrong things, you're now going to have faith in the wrong things, right? But if you hear the word of God, what do you have faith in? The word of God. That's why the Bible says, train up your child in the way that you go. And when mm-hmm. they grow old, they will not depart. Why? Because they've heard it, right? They have faith in it now. And now they're, it's hard to depart from that path. Right. What happens when you're trained wrong? You stay on the wrong path and it's hard to depart from that as well, right? right? So that, 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 that notion of positive self-talk, that notion of rehearsing the truth rather than the facts or the lies or the narratives that are constantly fed, man, that is so powerful to me. I was going to even bring up when you mentioned like the devil can come and tell you, you know, you're this, you're that, and it all be negative. I think someone can, you know, or the devil can tell you that you're going to be really, really successful in your life. That part. It still takes the same amount of action and belief to fight off the negative as it does, you know, all the things that you want to hear too. Because like, I truly believe that, you know, we're all going to be successful, you know, if we do what we need to do. But that if is a huge if, and it comes with the way we talk to ourselves. It comes with the people we surround ourselves with. It comes with the actions that a lot of people won't see and don't see um, because it's not by accident that you're anywhere. Um, so I think it's very, it's a very intentional practice that leads to again, action, because if I speak it, if I believe it, the next thing I'm going to do is act on it. Okay. So uh, one, one thing that I really want to, um, I, w- I want to touch on now because the, the language that we're using is very law of attraction, new agey yeah, yeah, yeah. manifest and mm-hmm. believe it and speak it. And it's very it's used right now in churches for manipulation, honestly. Got it. And, and I think that um, this is going to sound harsh, but I think that anything outside of God's original design or out, anything outside of God's order, right, and the way that he's kind of um, scripted it is like witchcraft, in my opinion. Mm. I feel like trying to access spiritual power outside of like your faith, like outside of God, my, in my opinion, inside of Jesus mm-hmm. is synonymous with 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 witchcraft because that's Mm -hmm. literally like what they do we're we're both nigerian like i don't know about you but i've i've seen like (laughs) i've seen like witchcraft like you know to my face you know what i'm saying and that's literally what they do in the babalaos back in the village and stuff right so i think that um i want to i want to move away from the notion that all we're saying is like speak it name it claim it believe it and it's yours you know, law of attraction type language, Mm -hmm. right? Like what would you say to somebody that puts their focus more on or puts the emphasis on the, on the speaking and the manifesting and the attraction rather than any of the actionable things that, you know, somebody might actually have to do to become successful. Yeah. Um, The architect is just as important as the brick mason. That part. I don't know how, like, you can't separate their value. They're two inherently different practices, um, you know, different things that you have to do in the process of building something great, um, but you need a design, and that's the believing it and the speaking it and manifesting it, um, but you need action. You need to lay down the bricks. You need to go to work. You need to show up. You need to be about it, and it's never anything you get. It's who you become. You don't become, you don't, you know, get a million dollars. become someone who can keep a million dollars, and that's kind of the difference. Um, so as you plan for all the things that you want and, you know, you see and you make it real and you manifest those things, plan for the ability to act and also pray for the, for the strength to be able to carry those things through, because that's really what Mm -hmm. you need. And I think that's a, that's really like a core tenet of my life. And we talk about that, um, you know, me and my fiance, when we, when we speak, we, we're very much, um, we have to practice both sides. we got to train both muscles, not only the believing, the manifesting, but also the action, um, because faith without works is dead. And without without putting effort, without showing up, without really striving for it, you essentially become a pretender. You essentially become someone who talks about it more than they do it. And that's nice to hear. Don't, I love those feel good conversations just as much as anybody. I love mm-hmm. it manifesting, sitting there, just ruminating on all the things we can be. Um, but there's nothing I, to me. There's nothing better than getting to work. There's nothing better than working with special people. And when you're, you're aligned in a way that not only we manifested this, but like we're doing this, wanna, it's, it's different. I, bro, I, I have friendships right now. Um, I, I had friendships. <laughs> I have acquaintanceships right okay. now, right? That 
literally our entire basis for friendship was sitting around. This is like early college days when I used to smoke weed. I don't smoke no more. But like yeah. we're literally sitting around a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Man, I just can't wait to. I just need to be up, man. I'm going to start investing in real estate. I'm going to do this and that when I get up and when I get up. And, you know, man, when we rich, yeah, we're going to buy these houses. You know, da, 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 when, when I get up, when I. If you're not right. doing it now, you're not doing it later. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You're not doing like, like, like we're, we're 18, 19, 20 years old. Yeah, you know if you're not doing it now, you're not doing it later. We're, we're old enough now to start make like, we were old enough then to start making decisions that were going to affect the life that we're living now. Like, I was blessed to have, I believe, got interrupted my life interrupted my plans at the age of 20 years old and shit me back made me lose my scholarship shit me back to my mom's house for me to literally start college all over again and i was able to graduate by god's grace in a year and a half like a four-year degree in a year and a half where mm -hmm. do you hear that at right that's being locked in and that's the grace of god now if that never happened to me right if i didn't take those 24 months to like recalibrate and restructure my life there is no possible way that like we're even friends today. Yeah. Cause you can like, you can connect. There's some relationships that are V's and some relationships that are A's, A's. you know yeah. what I'm saying? And for us, we we've kind of been like a, I would say we started at like a V and then we kind of, we've been like a diamond. Yeah. I would say. Right. And there's no better feeling to know that like when you're in your, you know, in your bag locked in trying to get better, not talking to your man's, and you reconnect after like a few months. You guys months. were on the same type time. Bro. You're on the same. And those are the people you need to be getting around more. Every time. I, I, I can't agree with you more. Um, and it's not something that like is you plan for it. You kind of just like, hey, I'm checking back in with you. And like you're motivated by those people. You're, Facts. you're inspired by them because it's like, man, like I, I didn't feel like I could talk about her. I was just kind of so head down and, you know. I was dealing with this, that, and the third, but you come to find out you guys can share a lot of good practices. You guys can share a lot of just perspective on things that maybe didn't work out and talk about those things. But like the commonality isn't the manifestation. The commonality is the work you guys are willing to do. Definitely. And um, I see it you, when you mentioned that my mind went all like right back to like a prayer. We used to say um, when I transferred to ESU uh, before we go out to any game, we used to just talk as a team and, you know, have a team just, spiritual moment it wasn't necessarily a prayer to any specific person just a spiritual moment and at the end of the prayer we talk about uh what we prayed for and say we don't ask for strength or speed um because those come in the days weeks and months leading up to this moment all we ask is for an opportunity to make plays that only champions can make and i didn't really understand that until i realized that can you say that one more time yeah 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 um we don't play pray for street speed or strength we um because those are gained in the days, weeks, and months leading up to this moment. So we're right, at, we're right there about to go out for kickoff. What we do pray for is an opportunity that, you know, to make plays that only champions can make. And that, to me, just always stuck with me. Um, not because, obviously, you know, it's go time, but also um, because that resonates in so many other ways in your life. You don't necessarily pray for, God, I hope this happens to me this way. I hope I'm ready for it. I hope I'm prepared for it because there's going to be a moment where I have to do all like all the work that I'm doing right now. I have to go compete. I have to go go get step on the court. Like I have to go do all those things. So for me, sports has really been aligned in the way I view things. And like I'm getting I'm practicing some days you go, you know, some weeks you go a lot of practice in one game. If you're playing football, maybe a few games in between and practice for playing basketball. But you need to practice. You cannot just continue to show up to game day and hope things work out um, because then that's more of the manifesting than it is the working. And once you're swinging too much on one side or the other. Uh, we talk about life as all kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. So, so Joel, yeah. Joel's going to start a podcast at some point called "Life Is Somewhere in the Middle" <laughs> because that saying I think is his life mantra. Yeah, and and um, when he really starts unpacking it, like you kind of started unpacking it last night. Yeah, yeah. It is it is holding the tension of life between every competing force is something that if somebody were to be able to do that successfully, they would, I believe. Be like um, the perfect person. Almost. I believe they would be the perfect person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think Jesus did that really well. Yeah. When, like, in, in, think about all the situations, you know, the women gets thrown out. Oh, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. He was like, okay, she's a, she sinned. Cool. All right, who else? Yeah, like, are you going to kill her? Yeah, who, the, yeah, go ahead. Throw the first stone. You know what I'm saying? Starts writing down. And then he still says, like, go and sin no more. Right? 
So he's not like condoning the sin, but in the same sense, he's not condemning. She's her. not damaged. She's not done for life. That's it's not it. a life sentence on her. She that can go exactly and it. update right. who she wants to be. And, and then in John one, right, it talks about like grace and truth mm. as well. The problem, the problem, a lot of people has is is they can bring grace and they over index on it, or they bring truth and they over and they over index on it, right? But there, you need to have grace and truth. You can't be oh. You're going to hell and you can't be no you're gonna lose people. <laughs> and you and you can't just be on the other side like nobody is everybody is you know what I'm saying? So like life is somewhere in the, in middle. the middle. You gotta right. bring both. You got you got, got homework. You. All right. You got homework, bro. <laughs> I got you, I got you. No, that's a you know, by God's grace that'll happen, but I I really do believe it. Life is often in the middle. Um, it's truly also again about your perspective and how you see it because I did not used to think that I did not used to believe it and it showed up in my life. I was very unbalanced in certain ways. Um, and now I'm looking for that balance and it's given me pause. It's, you know, caused me to take a little bit more time when I'm evaluating situations, a little bit more time in my approach and my response. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've stopped reacting as much. I've stopped, you know, just be flinching as much and really seeing it. And like they say, the game gets slower, even in life, the game gets slower. If you're able to, you know, slow it down and really get enough reps where you can see it like that. And I think that's really all it is. We got to put ourselves through these situations. We got to um, not run from them, not be avoidant, um, but truly face them head on and face them in a way that you don't let yourself down. And I think that's, if you talk about life is in the middle, that's probably my other mantra. Stop letting yourself down. It's so easy to do it. It's so mm -hmm. easy to lie to yourself. It's so easy to say you're going to do something and then just not do it. Um, Everything you do, like you said, you're practicing. Every time there's been a lesson taught um, and you're even teaching yourself a lesson, it's like, we can do that. We can BS. We can say something and not do it. And we're still going to have the you know chips and ice cream on the couch at the end of the night. Everything's good. Um, and it's not that you want to you know discipline or punish yourself in that way, but you want to be disciplined mm -hmm. so you don't have to feel like you ever need to punish yourself. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I'm learning, too. It's like I got to really be about that if I'm ever talking about it. I, I, think, I think people think that the best version of themselves is the is the fully loved version of themselves that, you know, has no accountability and has no, like, oh. Nothing's I'm, ever wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? And that's the imbalance. That's where it comes from. And also, the, the some people think that the best version of yourself is the version that you say no to yourself all the time. You fully deny yourself. But once again. Super structured, super rigid, super it doesn't work. Yeah. It really doesn't work that way because life is more gray than it is black and white. Absolutely. Right. And, and for if, if you hear nothing else in this podcast, like hear, hear this. Life is in the middle. Life is and the sooner middle. that you learn to hold the tension of life, whether that be career wise, whether that be, oh, man, I got a great freaking book. Talk to me. Okay. All right. So y'all need to go ahead and purchase this book right here. Okay. True North. All right. right. Um, who wrote this, John? Uh, Bill George and Zach Clayton. Man, I'm not even about to do this right now, but let me just see if I could find it. Cause uh, there. Chapter seven. Was that was that planted? No, bro. That, that's you know the a little you know the crazy part. I actually read all these books though. So he's lying. <laughs> I promise you. No, nah, not all. I don't even know what that one is. I, I borrowed some from my sister. All but right. most of I was these like, books, that bookshelf looks a little too conveniently most filled. Most of all right. these books I have actually read, bro. So I read. I, I actually read this book as part of my uh, strategic leadership course for my okay. MBA program, yep. right? Um, and this was one of the one of the books we had to leave. The the chapter seven I, I know because I folded it right. Um, I can't find it now, but whatever. Um, yeah. Chapter seven is leading an integrated life, right? Um, and in it, he talks about how you'll never have, you'll never be able to find the balance of um, how do I put this? You'll never be able to find uh, the balance of family work and all of these different things. Like you'll never be able to pour perfectly into all of them and have them all stabilized. You'll always have to pour or take from one to give to the other. Cause you're playing, you're essentially playing a zero sum game, right? right? You got to take from something to be able to give to something. Cause you're not an infinite resource. Um, so he, he pretty much says that uh, leading an integrated life is essentially one coming to terms with that. And understanding that something has to fall back for you to be able to give to something, right? And then essentially over communicating that to the people around you, to yourself, and then being able to structure your life in a way where when you have to pull back from something, it's not it's not burning down, it's not you know falling falling away, um, and that that's really the idea of of um, 
the balance, right? Mm-hmm. The tension, holding those, all those things in, in, in circulation and keeping that in check. Yeah. I think, uh, right away my mind went to just the overall balance and being able to like use discretion in your life about where you need to be. Because I think that's the biggest thing you mentioned. We're not an infinite resource and that couldn't be more true. And I think more people need to realize that they are not an infinite energy source. You need to rest, you need to sleep, you need to get around people, you need to socialize, you need to just feel your community, but also, too, you need to be able to talk to yourself, you need to be by yourself, you need to be at work and do all the other things, too. That calls on you to be a dynamic person. All those things I just listed, they're a lot. Just doing that day-to-day. God forbid you have kids. God forbid you have anything else that's pulling you in another direction outside of the standard work, sleep, and life. Um, It really calls for you to know where you're going because somebody who has no direction is pouring into everything evenly. Somebody with the direction knows I need to give a little bit here. I can hold off on here a little bit more and kind of push things because I'm going somewhere when I can even out and where maybe when I'm resting, that's when you're even pouring a little bit more evenly. But Mm -hmm. truthfully, it's about knowing where you need to be in life rather than trying to be everywhere. Everywhere gets you nothing. Being in the right place gets you where you want to go. And like pouring into the right things, being around the right people, having the right conversations, doing the right things, those lead you to where you need to go more so than being like, well, I did everything today. I cold, uh, you know, I cold plunged, I saunaed, I spoke to five mentors, I did this, I did that. And like, how come I'm not seeing anything? It's like, you're just doing kind of doing everything in a vacuum almost. Cause like, what does, what was the purpose? What was the intention behind some of these things? And, you know, they're obviously p- positive, um, you know, intentions behind what I just listed, but ultimately does it drive you towards where you need to go? You're going to get benefits from all those things because yeah. they're good things to do, but ultimately just doing every good thing doesn't necessarily get you to what you want. Yes, you did a good thing and you know, you will be blessed for that. But ultimately it's a, it's a law of diminishing returns. Absolutely. Right. So just doing every everything good thing like, yeah, it's like, what do you get you anywhere past a certain point? Right. Right. So, so let's get actionable. Yeah. All right. Cause I, I, this is my, this is my favorite part of t- having conversations with you yeah. because like, we're not, you know, like we, we are, um, su- successful, right. If you can say that, um, I think that we are, are good communicators. I think that we are in a place right now that not a lot of, you know, 27 year olds are. Yeah. Um, and we're, I'm, like I'm grateful to God for that, and I'm gonna say and not but because but negates yep. and conjoins. Yeah, right. Tension. We we are grateful to God and and we work our butts off. You know what I'm saying. So so let's get actionable on how we how you know what to pour into at a specific point in your life. Mm. And I know we're talking from the 27 year old bodies. But trust me, our minds are not 27. And even if our minds are like in our mid 30s, let's say that I, I think I personally think I have the mind of a 40 year old. Gotcha. Right. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to say 60 because I think I could grow. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I, I think that um, I think that the, the the mindset that we have in the body that we have right now with the age that we have and the energy that we have. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of people will benefit from from that insight. So yeah. tell me how you think people should know what to pour into at a specific given point in their life. There, believe it or not, and I know this is what nobody wants to hear, there is no perfect answer. That part. There is no perfect answer. That's why I mess with you, dude, man. <laughs> there is just no perfect answer. I wish I could say, do this, do this, do this, because then I'd be there already. There is no perfect answer. Do the thing that is going to get you closer to the thing that you want. So if it's, and, and being able to understand that thing is really, again, goes back to our first topic, self-talk. What do I need? I'm feeling angry. I'm, I, I feel like I've been working too much and boom, I, you know, I'm stressed out. My mind is saying two things. You need to rest and you need to get out around community and you need, you need to be filled up. You've been doing too much of one thing. So being balanced even in that way is another way. It's like, Hey, I haven't done this in a while. And this is, you know, over, I've leaned into this. Maybe I can lean into that. And that's where you are able to now learn. It's like, okay, even if I'm doing something a lot, I need to make sure that I'm not completely turning my back to something, right? But also making sure that I'm giving the appropriate amount of effort and practice into this, right? We talk basketball, sports all the time, right? If you're really, really good at dunking the ball, but you find yourself in the corner a lot, and when they kick out to you, you're missing, stop working on driving the ball. Go work on your corner three. That's telling you you're not getting the results you want, and you need to go work on your corner three. So, so... Y'all, y'all missed how profound that was because you can have, you can have a skill set in a role 
in a season of your life. Mm -hmm. If that role changes or that season changes, your function and skill set needs to change as well. And it's up to you to adapt. It's nobody's business. You need to then adapt and pour into that new bucket, into that new skill set, into that new opportunity yeah. more. We talked about purpose last night, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe Dr. Darius Daniels says it like this. Your purpose is the culmination of you saying yes to callings, to different roles throughout the course of your life. Your purpose is the culmination of you saying yes to different callings, to different roles at multiple points in your life, mm -hmm. right? So at different points in your life, you're going to have the opportunity to play different roles. Let's liken it to basketball. You're probably going to get traded. You're probably going to be a free agent. Go. People are going to come into your team. They're going to have different skill sets. You're going to have the opportunity to play different roles. If you stick to your one skill set, do you know who you're going to be? Out of the league. You're going to be Russell Westbrook. <laughs> that's what you're going. That's what's going to yeah. happen to you. Do you want to be Russell Westbrook? Do you want to go from one of the arguably greatest point guards in the entire history of the game to like riding the bench? Get that guy off my team. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? To Terrence Mann starting over you? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Anyway, I'm not. I'm sorry, Russell. Um, but yes, you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, if your role changes, then what you have to pour into changes. And you know the good, the really, really good part about self-talk as well and introspection? You, you can change your role. Like, if you don't like the role that you're playing in your life right now, you can change it simply by talking, talking yourself into a new role, into a new position, and then acting into a new role, into a position, right? It, it's, less about, it's less about your circumstance changing as it is you changing within your circumstance, circumstance yeah. you know what i'm saying and i think that's what a lot of people get um get messed up as well yeah i think i find um specifically in those situations i think anger boils up when situations change and people are forced to change uh, into new roles maybe unprompted or unprepared um and i say that because i truly was in that position in multiple times in my life in different facets and different instances where i'm like why is change being forced on me i'm doing what i need to do i'm doing it at a high level i'm doing it well why am i being bothered um but it's calling on me to be multiple it's calling on me to be dynamic so because this is like it's just showing me this is also a part of the thing that you're doing and if you can't do this then you're only just doing one thing and you're not as i don't know good at that thing then as you think you are whatever that may be because if you're not willing to change um while life is truly the definition of life is just change like change is yeah. evolution it's always happening around you and if you want to fix yourself as something that's just kind of going against that that's unnatural right. that's the unnatural part i was i was watching um this this netflix show yesterday it's called the resident mm. um and and in it, there was a guy, you know, he was like a salsa dancer or whatever. And he like had a heart arrhythmia. So he had to come in, get surgery, get it repaired and all of that. And essentially at the end of it, something happened where he couldn't dance anymore. Like he didn't, he didn't feel it. He was alone. He was feeling very depressed. And he was like, oh man, I can't give up salsa. Like salsa is all I have. Mm. Right. And I'm just sitting there. Like, it's like a really sad, like type of scene. And I'm sitting there like, Nick, what are you talking How is salsa all you have? <laughs> Like, what do you mean salsa is all you have? You know what I'm saying? Like, when when I think about the amount of people that, like, are amazing basketball players, right, or amazing talents, very, very smart at doing all this stuff, and then come to think about it, they just completely over-index in one situation. And, and what are they covering? Like, why did they do that? They're covering inability. If I get really, really like, I don't know how to put it. If I get really, really good at one thing and I keep telling you about it and I keep trying to do that one thing, it's probably because I don't want to do another thing or I'm not really good at another thing. You're compensating. Um, You're overcompensating. Overcompensating to protect an image, an ego or a practice. Um, and that's where for me, it's very telling. And I used to, again, practice that heavily. I can't stress that enough. I want to be good at the thing that I'm good at and only do that forever. Not only are you going to get bored of that. It's not sustainable, and life is quite literally the opposite of that. You have to change. You have to adapt. You have to get better um, because I believe if you're not growing, you're dying, just like every other natural thing in the world. Um, it doesn't just get to be like, hey, I'm going to take five, six months and just kind of exist, not growing, not aging, not getting worse, not no nutrition to anything, just kind of floating. 
I maybe don't know, but if you can find a situation that naturally occurs like that in life where just nothing is happening or it just happens in a vacuum, you let me know. But for as far as I can understand about our reality, like you either have to go or you're getting worse. Facts. Facts. So uh, another, another thing that, um, another negative, huge negative when it comes to over indexing or being too one dimensional in mm. life, this just came to mind cause it actually happened to a close family member of mine. Um, they were a very hard worker. Like, you know, people are like some, some people are strategic thinkers and some people are like executors, right? Executor. This family member of mine, phenomenal executor. Like mm. you give, you give them a task, they're, they're able to do it and knock it out of the park. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of times you start attributing that to your self-worth, like what you can accomplish, you start attributing that to your self-worth, right? Now, what happens when that becomes your over-index is you open yourself up to be used. You open yourself up to be seen as a tool. You're a tool and an object to people. Rather than a person. person. You know what I'm saying? So instead of, um, hey, I, pastor, I'm going to say it. Hey, pastor, I actually can't do this right now because X, Y, Z, or Hey person, I actually can't overextend myself in that sense. It's more like, no, I'm going to do it. Oh no, you need to do it. Cause you're the one that has to do it. You're the one that you're the only one that I could trust to do this. And then that, that's where manipulation kind of opens up and all that. And I, I, I just want to say, like, I say this for specifically for the successfully driven people, because at times we have our natural gifts and our natural calling. So a lot of us are good at doing stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you need to be wary of even your own positive strengths. Like you need to be wary of even your strengths, right? People talk about, you know, mind your weaknesses, but mind your strengths too. Right. And don't let your strengths become something that actually deter you as well. Balance it, hold the tension of both. Yeah. I think, um, just, Minding that strength is really, 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 really important. Um, when you talk about just making sure that you're not just doing something because that's the only thing you can do and asking yourself, if that's the only thing I can do, why can't like, why is that the case? Because minding your strength means that, hey, I'm really, really good at this, but is there a blind spot? Because you're trying to be good in holistically, essentially, not just in one area. If you're approaching things the right way and to that family member who is essentially um, just ready to go, ready to go and kind of essentially leads that leads to be abused. I think that's kind of the rite of passage almost. That's how it goes. Because when you lack that consideration for yourself, when you're not saying that, yeah, I do things at a high level. Yeah, I can knock things out, but I also deserve rest. Also, I need rest. Also, I want to maybe do other things. If you don't give yourself that chance, if you don't have that self-talk, if you don't even consider that for yourself, why would another random person look at you, see how good you're doing things and be like, nah, let me let them chill. I'm going to use that as much as I can until I can anymore. And that's how, especially when you're in a fast paced environment, that's how people will move. So again, you set the tone for how you, not only you'll be treated, but how you'll work and how you'll do everything in life. You set it because how will somebody go and treat you or consider you more than you'll ever consider yourself? How, that never works. Yeah. So for me, like it's big on minding both my strengths and my weakness because that completely ties into the consideration that I have for myself. It completely ties into the way I approach things. And also too, it bars me from being again, abused and abusing myself. Again, okay. You make sure you talk. Yeah, man. Okay. So, all right. So, so one, one of the things that we like to like do, um, also is we want to boil the conversation down. Let's do it. Right. Yeah. Because we've talked about a lot now. Um, you have a, you have a younger brother. He's kind of old now. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. have you have younger brothers. I have though, younger right? brothers too. Yeah. Um, so the 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 next part is like um, it's called if I were a boy, right? Um, if you could distill this conversation to like a ten year old version of yourself, right? You could either speak to a ten year old or you could speak to ten year old Joel. Mm -hmm. How would you boil down the conversation for them in like two or three sentences? I would just say your thoughts and your actions are truly the only thing that matters. The rest of it is kind of just noise, but your thoughts and your actions really do matter. So I would break that down to say, if there's anything that 10-year-old Joel wanted to do or believed at the time, or another 10-year-old or my 10-year-old brother who's 11, um, you know, if my 11-year-old brother came to me and was like, you know, how do I view life or how should I do that? I would say your thoughts and your actions really do matter. Um, as you see it, you'll go and do it, even the negative stuff. 
even the stuff that's not good for you. If you see it, you'll go do it. Even if you know it too, that's not good for you, but it's being modeled around you. I'm just going to go with the flow because it's easier. Um, when you like, when you get around good environments, when you get around people that are doing the things the right way, again, it's easy to see and then do. So as you see it, as you, you'll believe it. And then as you believe it, you'll do it. So I think for that 10 year old, for that person, you need to know that. But then whoever's in charge of that 10 year old, who's ever in charge of that young person, get them in an environment where they can actually, you know, continue to, that's modeled and they continue to practice on that because it's so easy to talk at somebody who then has to go home or has to do something that's so like opposite of their reality. And mm -hmm. oftentimes we're talking to people like that who like, they just can't see it for themselves. They know it's right. They believe it's right. They'll clap with you. They'll dap you up. They'll do everything. But then they'll go home and be like, that's not for me. So let me just go back to the regular BS. That's not for me. And I've seen that situation a bunch of times. So for that 10 year old, you got to believe it's for you. It got to be reinforced. So I would keep telling that 10 year old that as much as I could, I wouldn't stop. And then also try to get them in an environment where that's practiced. Try to get them in a, you know, a sport, being accountable, being a good teammate, doing something where you're working in a community where you're um, leaning on others and others are leaning on you too. Um, where you, the way you speak to yourself really does matter. I've never seen someone negatively achieve in sports. I've never seen someone negatively achieve really in life. You don't, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm crap. I'm not, I'm worthless. I'm doing this and then go and, you know, hit, 125 percent past your quota or you know go knock it out in your job or in your sport or whatever like that i've just never seen that and i i typically don't maybe it exists but i just typically don't um a lot of times you overcome negativity whether it's a bad coach or your personal negativity or your um your surroundings doubting you but if you like are that negativity it's very hard to overcome yourself and a lot of people are not facing their external like they're not fighting external factors they're just fighting themselves like they get out of their way they'll be fine i believe that about like 95 percent of people bro do you know what just came to mind oh my god um oh my goodness i've been saying oh my goodness instead of oh my god because my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my son's a parrot so he just copies um it's the cutest thing when he says oh my goodness though uh, so um one of the one of the names for god is yahweh mm -hmm. right um when moses was at the burning bush and moses was like Yo, you want me to go to Egypt and set your people free? But when I pull up, like, what? Sh who should I say sent me? And what does God say to call him? I am. Right? So when we say, so the, the word, I, the, the phrase I am is like another word for God. Yeah. Right? It's like another name for God. Um, and how do we pray? God, X, Y, Z. Right? Mm -hmm. God, comma, X, Y, Z. Right? So whenever we say things like, I am dumb. You can replace I am with God, comma. Mm. So you're essentially saying God, dumb. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like you're, you're praying these things over yourself yeah. without realizing that you're like you're you're bad. I think that's why the Bible talks about like we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, like but principalities and powers in the higher places. Like we're not wrestling against like you and me. Like if we're in like a competition for anything, like we're backed by it. By principalities or backed by powers like we're, we're backed by spirits that, that are like in like influencing us and like directing us and um my, I, I mine's the holy spirit but other people got other spirits you know mm -hmm. doing doing what they're doing um and i and i think that whenever we invoke because that's what we're doing like when we when we say things like that we're invoking that onto ourselves right so whenever we invoke this negativity on ourselves like we are our prayers are being answered and we're wondering why our prayers aren't answered. Yeah. No, they are being answered. Yeah. You're just praying the wrong prayer. Yeah. Because like, it's not just like when we like say, hey, God, I need this, this and this. God is also listening when you're in your head saying that you're dumb and you're worthless or you're this, that and the third. Because that's mm -hmm. a part of your self-talk. All you're talking to God because God <laughs> is in you and he's connected with you. That's your prayer is a form of self-talk. It is also a form of communication. Um and you can hear it. You don't necessarily have to be negative in a prayer to hear that it's not necessarily a positive one. Being like, God, I can't seem to get this. I need to do this. I need to do that. Rather than saying, God, help me just find direction. Help me uh, be able to discern. Help me be able to do this. Because it, it, you start speaking like you are equipped and you just want his, his grace over the thing. You, you start speaking like you're able and you just want to make sure that he has his blessing over it. And that's how we need to maneuver life. A lot of times I feel like people pray that, that God just comes in and does something for them. Why would God get you hired at some random job in Atlanta? 
like that's your business <laughs> like <laughs> That's your God's business. concerned about his kingdom. <laughs> yeah, he's like, not worried about your pockets per se. You per know se, what I'm saying? but like, it's still something to pray for. But it's something to act on, and it's something that you hope God aligns you. God puts you in position. God gives you the opportunity because you don't worked on the speed and strength. Like we talked about that prayer, you yep. worked on it up leading to this moment, and now you're ready for it. Yep. Um, and I don't think, like you said, God won't put you in a situation you're not ready for. And at the same time, even if you aren't ready um, or if you feel like you're not ready, oftentimes you are. You're just afraid. Um, and we can pray and we do all these things. And now I'm I'm learning to pray that I, I, I hold on to it. I'm learning to pray that I have the mind and the, the smarts and the discipline and the patience to keep and grow everything that I've gotten and everything that I've gotten so far. And also the things that I haven't gotten. Um, Either I find a reason why or I'm able to do it, you know, in a later point in my life. But like I don't take any anything as this is the end. The end is the end. And I probably won't be around to talk about it. So let me just focus on what I'm doing right now. You know, so, yeah, man, all to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly more that we can ever ask, think or imagine. That's it. Continuously, two things are in communication with God, our words and our thoughts. And if we can channel those words and our thoughts to be in line with his will, channel those words and our thoughts to better edify ourselves, to build ourselves up so that we are not negatively pulling ourselves down. Um, and then we act according to what we've spoken and what we've decreed. Man, oh man, I cannot wait to see how y'all come out on the other side of that battle. Because it is a battle to do sometimes. Absolutely. So don't forget, it is a battle. Oh, Joel, man, thank you for... I told y'all we was going to have a great conversation, man. Joel, <laughs> thank you for pulling up, man. Yes, sir. We got to run this back again. Absolutely. And Absolutely. and can you bring um, your your smarter wife ne- next time, <laughs> yeah. please? Yes, absolutely. No, um, she is like five times is I kid you not. I kid as, you not. As smart as I didn't want to say as present. Like <laughs> yeah, if 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 uh if you enjoyed this one, you'll absolutely, absolutely, absolutely enjoy her. So um next time I'll make sure she comes with me. Please. Um but no, this has been an absolute blessing. It's been an honor and it's something that I know we you know we talked about doing. So just uh really for me a dream come true to be able to do this with you. This is one of the I things where I look that. at it's just like this is cool. This is cool. Um, this is cool between probably just me and you because you know the way we grew up and um, you know just our history but this is awesome so it was it's absolutely something that I'm looking forward to do it again Facts. Um, but I will definitely bring my better half I appreciate so, you man yeah. alright y'all thanks for tuning in to this episode of TUI I just want to encourage you guys to continuously to grow more in your faith your family and your finance every day I love you guys peace peace